on the defensive glass, even on the offensive glass, we're not uh, we're not hitting on all cylinders there. Um, made a few mistakes, rotation mistakes, communication mistakes in the second half of Mercer. Just continuing to tighten up defensively, offensively. We the defense is past offense at this point. As much as we stressed it earlier uh, in the in the practice in the preseason, uh, we've, we've got a. I think we've got a much higher ceiling than we've than we've shown to this point offensively, um, both versus man and zone. We were pretty porous against zone the other day against Mercer. We're going to see a similar type of zone against St. Bonaventure, so that's an area of concern right now. What's your impression of St. Bonaventure? Uh, very disciplined, uh, very talented, athletic, versatile. Uh, one through four can shoot it. One through four can drive you. They do a great job of um, spacing of, of putting. Um, Talented offensive players in positions to be successful. Uh, Jalen Adams is a, is a terrific point guard, as good offensively uh, uh, as, as I'm sure we'll see this year. They're a team that uh, had a strong argument to make the tournament last year. A bunch of guys returning. Um, the A-10 is a terrific league, so it's a it's a great test for us on the neutral floor. It'll be a very difficult challenge for us. Um, one that uh, I'm sure our guys will be excited about. Do you plan on going with the same starting lineup you've gone with the last two nights? Honestly, that will be tomorrow night, you know, even in the shoot around um, before those decisions are made. I want our guys understanding um, that, that they, have, they have an opportunity every day with between the lines. And today, we could have a starter that's not very good. We could have our ninth man just dominate practice. And I want, I want there to be a reward system uh, for that. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to, again, reward guys. Uh, minutes based on production every day in practice in the previous game. What's it all most about Justin Leon's performance against Mercer? Uh, he's really been shooting well all fall, so um, it, it really wasn't a surprise. I thought Casey and, and Chris got him some good looks, and Justin did a good job in transition, just running the floor, getting his feet set. He's uh, he's a junkyard dog for us. He's got a crazy motor. Our guys understand that. They respect the approach that he brings to practice every day. And he's, he's a much improved shooter just by being in the gym a bunch. So happy for him to see some uh, results shooting the basketball. Uh, but Justin's also got to understand to continue to allow it to come to him, you know, just like Devin, just like Kayvon. And, uh, could be someone else's night uh, on Thursday. Could be Justin's night again. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. We just got to take the right shot. Nice to see the ball go on the basket from the foul line. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Um, knock on wood, we continue shooting it this way. We haven't practiced, so we just hope we continue to see that carry over. Guys, I think are um, you can see in their body language a little more confident at the foul line. Um, Casey, I, I believe, went four six, if I'm not mistaken, and, and a couple of his misses were right there as well. Johnny Boone was a much improved free throw shooter to this point, so it's a big factor for us. It's uh, it kept us out of the NCAA tournament last year, you know, single-handedly. Uh, and, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully this year we continue shooting like this. You took steps. This offseason to kind of redirect uh, the energy at the line. What were yes. some of the things you did? Uh, we talked a lot about it being mental and physical. And, and from a physical standpoint, we we as a staff and guys were open-minded enough to change, you know, tweak, if you will, a couple guys' shots in uh, terms of their their technique. You know, so there's a physical side to it, and then the mental <laughs> side. Um, Guys, uh, we, we've, we've seen a, a, a sports psychologist. We've had a guy come in and meet with a few of our guys, and it's, uh, it's put them in a, in a pretty good place. Again, you know, you're, you're knocking on wood. You hope that, that moving forward we can continue to be in the same mindset. I'm not sure it's fixed. I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to sit here and think we're a great free throw shooting team. Uh, but what we've seen like the first two games is, is actually what we've been in practice. You, just, you, you want that to continue, of course. Um, our guys are in a pretty good place, but there's a, there's a physical and mental side to it. How'd you come up with the idea of a sports psychologist? Oh, uh, that's, that's a good question. I, probably, I was approached by a couple different people mid to late last season, and I didn't want it to become more mental than it already was. We were struggling so bad at the foul line. Um, we try to infuse confidence in our guys in different ways through trial and error. Bunch, you know, bunch of error there. Uh, tons of reps and practice, of course. We, we try to um, 
shoot a bunch of free throws under duress, wild winded, putting team pressure, uh, team accountability pressure on our guys, and it helped to a certain extent. But I guess late in the year, circling back, it probably just proposed by different guys, and and uh, I know it's I know it's sports psychology is it's becoming more and more popular, and really in all sports and. Definitely have a ton of respect for it. Need to learn way more about it than I do now. Um, I was exposed to it a certain amount during the off season, and, and our guys were too, especially uh, a few of our guys, and especially at the foul line. What was the feedback you got from the players? Oh, very, very positive. Yeah. Um, especially Casey and, and John and, and Justin Leon. Again, I made mention of this in the past that. I don't. I don't think it, that that our guy um, only helped us at the foul line. I, I think that if if you can train your mind, use different methods to understand how to how to stay in that place, whatever that place is for you, and or whatever that trigger word is for you that keeps you in that place or gets you back into that place of of calm, of confident, those type things. I think it can help you with the rest of your game as well. And, um, it's something that we'll continue to pursue in the future and continue to educate ourselves about. As far as seeing the offense improve, is there anything particular you're doing Monday through Wednesday this week, yeah. or is it more just going with you know the way you're playing, hoping and trusting mm -hmm. shots fall eventually? Uh, we we'll stress different things on on a weekly basis, and then on an opponent basis, knowing what we might get, what we might not get. Uh, excuse me. Well, I was about to find a member of the media. I still got to find you. Eight suicides. I apologize. <laughs> Just uh, eight? <laughs> um, where were we? Just what you're doing, maybe, yeah. if anything, to kickstart yeah. the offense? Um, we, we just, in, in looking at those first two games and, and some of the things we struggle with, you're, you're always evaluating your last performance, of course, and even like tomorrow, we'll evaluate today's practice on film. But um, Mercer did a good job of. of getting us stagnant in zone and too much standing, too much holding of the basketball. Uh, we're stressing trying to get that thing inside and attacking the interior of the zone. And when a guy gets it, he can't, you know, if it's not there, let's just move it. Uh, so too much ball holding, too much standing. And I thought that carried over to our man-to-man -man attack. So a uh, point of emphasis today and tomorrow, probably as much as anything, is, is getting back to cutting hard um, and moving that ball, seeing the ball pop a little bit more. Do you expect Jesus to get more minutes against St. Bonaventure's? St. Bonaventure. Uh, no, not necessarily. I'm, I'm open-minded going into each matchup. Um, who knows? I, I think Chris understands that he could. Chris, Chris is, is, you know, he's he's potentially a, a starter for this team. You know, I, I think we probably have eight guys that, that you can start any one of them. Um, and, and Keith Stone's pushing as well um, as he continues to gain experience. Would be a guy that, that I think fights for more of an argument to start. But Chris Shields is going to play starter minutes on a pretty frequent basis. Uh, he could play 17 minutes against Bonaventure. He could play 35. I'm not sure based on how he's playing, what type of uh, flow we're in, and, and how uh, other guys on the team are playing as well. And then is Gak now ahead of Rimmer in the front court rotation? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, it, it, we wanted to find him a little bit of experience because he didn't get any experience in the preseason. Skyler, I, I think we have a better, probably a little more confidence in exactly what we're going to get right now. I mean, Warjak, Warjak is, is just getting started. Uh, we love his upside and what, what we think he could become. But Skyler, again, I said this to you guys, he's he's had a good offseason as well. Skyler's a better player than he was a year ago. Um, so it, you never know what his opportunity will be. I, I know uh, he's hopeful, and, and I know what we're going to get from Skyler during practice today. It's the positive and energy is going to be Mike, do you see anything a little off with uh, Kayvon's stroke or confidence after a couple games? I know it's early. Um, to be honest with you, not not a stroke. I, I, it looks beautiful to me. Um, but they're, they're, I, I'm not sure he's been as aggressive as, as we want him to be, so I'd be lying if I told you I didn't think he was, uh, or that he was just as confident as he, as he was three weeks ago. So uh, we're going to continue to um, um, Urge him to be aggressive. I thought there was a couple times he, he, he came off screens the other day and he had a pretty good look. He's so unselfish that when he's not in a great offensive rhythm, um, you know, he's, he's liable to, to pass shots up. And, and he's the one guy in the team I'd, I'd rather him just, I just assume he never pass a shot up. Uh, I always think when he's shooting it, the next one's going in, whether he's missed 
uh, his last one or last four or five, uh, I, we all know how electric he can be when he gets himself going. When guys bulk up work. like that, you ever notice that that affects their shot? Yeah, I think so. Because he's definitely a bigger guy. You know what? His weight, his weight uh, is, I want to say, two or three pounds less. He's gotten a little more cut up. Yeah. He's gotten in better condition. Um, so I'm not sure that's a factor. Um, because again, he was he was really shooting the ball well, and with really good shooters, really good players, you know how it is. He he's uh, he's liable to uh, to go on a big streak here, you know, to have a big game, and hopefully it's Thursday night. We said it in, po in post game the other night. It's really good to see Justin get going. Johnny Bunu in our first matchup against Florida Gulf Coast got his offensive game going. So early in the year, as soon as every one of those eight or nine guys that's capable of maybe getting you double figures on any given night, as soon as we can get all eight or nine of those guys having had a pretty good game offensively themselves, I think the sooner that, that we'll settle in together. You alluded to their backcourt and their guards, uh, Adams and, and Mobley, um, both high scoring guards, pretty good size. Yes. Got a little bit of size over, over Hill and, and Chris. Um, anything yeah. defensively that specifically you plan to do uh, in light of the, those guards? Um, with, we, you know, we're, we're gonna pressure the ball and we're gonna press regardless of who we're playing. Um, it'll be probably even more uh, important with these guys, Jalen Adams. We, we've got to we've got to keep pressure on him. We've, we we can't allow him to be comfortable because he, when he, he like Stephon Moody last year from Ole Miss, when he crosses half court, he's in range, and so um, you you can't lose track of him for a split second. You can't get out of his stance. You can't take a playoff. He's just so talented offensively, and mobile as well. You know whether it's a defending ball screens, transition defense. Uh, offensive rebound, scramble situations, we better find those guys quickly and make everything as difficult as possible for them. Because those two guys, especially Adams, you could you could, you could play as, as hard as you possibly could play against them for 40 minutes, not make any mistakes, and they can still be 15, a guy like that. Um, so you, you, you hope that it's, that it's in the teens and it's not in the, in the 30s.